compared to your thousand cases. Okay. We are now nice. sober. Okay, sir, we are live now. Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Jasmine Mavaha, and I welcome you all to Global Interdisciplinary Summit 2020. And now today I'm back with another renowned speaker, and it gives me immense pleasure to welcome Dr. Cosmin Dima from Romania. Talking about him, Dr. Cosmin Dima has graduated from the Faculty of Dentistry, University of Medicine and Pharm Pharmacy, Carol de Vila, Bucharesti, in 2001. He became a certified implantology in 2004. From uh, 2014, he held a master degree in periodontology. And in 2016, he started his PhD in surgery on the theme, bone reg regeneration around implants. During the years, he published many articles about bone regeneration around implants. He also became a member in different societies such as Society of Aesthetic Dentistry in Romania, European Society of Cosmetic Dentistry, International Congress of Oral Implantology. He is co-founder and education director of the Digital Dentistry Romania Society. Dr. Kosmin Dima invented two surgical techniques, snake technique and PMT, that is periosteal membrane technique, both of them with excellent results in bone and soft tissue augmentation. The value of his clinical cases is worldwide known as Chilish company has chosen one spectacular case about vertical bone regeneration made by Dr. Dima to be exposed on their Jupli platform as a combination of 50, recognition of 50 years of success in bone regeneration. Dr. Cosmin Dima is the managing director of the Dental Progress Clinic one of the most important dental clinics in Romania. So today he'll be talking about improving tissues around implants, new techniques. And I'm sure that everyone will learn something new today. So before moving ahead, I would like you guys to go through the link in the description box. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for this nice introduction. Thank you all for joining my lecture. And thank you to the Global Summit for uh, such a huge um, effort to make uh, such a nice event. Uh, of course, as you can see on my screen, uh, we have uh, different uh, times and uh, these different times are because of this uh, very aggressive virus. So uh, we have to stay home, like you can see on the screen and I recommend you to stay home. Two weeks ago, I had a um, webinar and uh, I told uh, to the participants that uh, there are more than 1 million cases around the world. And only in two weeks, there are more than 3 million. So 1 million cases per week, this is huge. And um, this is very important to understand that we fight uh, with a strong enemy. We will beat it, we will succeed. But at this moment, I think it's better to stay home. On the other hand, of course, we all want to um, come back to our passion, patient to dentistry, to our patients, to our passion, and uh, for sure this uh, will be possible uh, soon. Today uh, we will talk about uh, two techniques. One is um, for uh, improving uh, heart tissues, and the other one is for improving the soft tissues. But we will start uh, with the first one, which is um, PMT surgery. PMT surgery is actually periosteal membrane technique. And uh, I um, uh, developed this technique thinking that the best membrane in the world is our patient's uh, periosteum. And uh, I will show you 10 steps uh, to success. And if you follow these steps, I can assure you that uh, you will uh, have uh, great results even if uh, you deal with the different uh, uh, cases and uh, some of the cases are uh, quite um, difficult. I have prepared for you these um, drawings to understand from the beginning the technique and then I will show you a clinical case to understand every step uh, very very uh, easily. So the first thing we have to do is uh, to make 
crestal incision, but it's very important not to section the periosteum, like I will show you a little bit later. Then we have to start with a, flip flap, uh, with a split flap from the crest. And what is important here is that we have to do the incision a little bit opposite to um, uh, what um, we are used to, because when we are dealing with the uh, uh, standard uh, techniques, we know that we have to press the scalpel to section the periosteum very well from the beginning. Now we try the opposite not to press the scalpel, not to section the periosteum, and then we start from the crest with a split flap. And after we made the, the split flap on the buckle and on the lingual too, we uh, cut the periosteum as lingual as possible. So let's uh, see the clinical case. This is the panoramic X-ray. We can see that uh, we have enough uh, height of the bone. But uh, if uh, we are looking at the CBCT, we can see that we don't have uh, enough uh, width of the bone. So we are starting with uh, 4.7 millimeters or even uh, 3.9. And you can see that clinically, we can uh, uh, definitely conclude that we need horizontal bone augmentation. We cannot insert the implants without any bone augmentation because we will have no predictable result in time. So let's see the 10 steps to success with the PMT, periosteal membrane technique. The first step, as I told you, is crestal incision without sectioning, sectioning the periosteum. The second step is split flap. We start with the split uh, flap from the crest. We need for this especially instrument a bandable blade. Otherwise, we cannot do it. And you'll see that I'll show you a little bit later also the, uh, the periosteal pocket flap described by uh, Marius Steinman and uh, Homley Wang and uh, Maurice Alama in 2012. And they had almost the same idea, but with some um, changes, which I think are very important. So the split flap from the crystal incision, then I think this is the most important uh, step for our um, uh, goal, for our um, success. Here is the most difficult area, uh, the macrogingival margin, because if we press it too much or if we try to split with a sharp instrument, we can perforate the mucosa. And if we have a perforation, we can have uh, complications. And of course, it's better to avoid this. The first step is to start with the mucosal detachment and we use some special instruments like you can see in this picture. And you can see now that uh, we have made the uh, mucosal detachment and the great advantage is that we have no bleeding. Thinking that if we use a blade and we cut the vessels, we have a lot of bleeding, that means hematoma, that means a lot of problems, maybe pain, uh, swelling for the patient and of course this is not good for the patient and this is not good for our um, surgery too because if the patient is swelling too much uh, the tension in the flap is increasing and we can uh, lose the result. Now is the, uh, is the time for uh, the lingual buccal detachment. This is also a very sensitive area because we know that the uh, lingual uh, mucosa is very thin, so we have to be very attentive not to perforate it. And now we can see that the sectioning of the periosteum is as lingual as possible. You can see uh, the line on the lingual, so we have to the left the buccal and uh, to uh, the right the lingual. So the sectioning of the periosteum is as lingual as possible. You can see now the periosteum. You can see that we have um, split it asymmetrically to have enough on the buckle where we want to make the bone augmentation. These are the instruments we need for this technique. So we need a blade 15C. We need also a bandable blade. We need some instrument for mucosal detachment and uh, we need also a blunt instrument to detach uh, the mucosa at the macrogingival margin. Now it's time for implant planning. After we prepared our soft tissue, it's time for implant planning. For implant planning, we have to know how to insert the implant. 
And we have to keep in mind that vestibular oral, we have to center the implant. Corona apical is very important to insert the uh, implant according to biological width so that we, we will have bone remodelation, not bone loss, because now we know how the biology works uh, around our implants. We know the differences between the implants and teeth, so we can insert the implants in such a way not to lose the bone. And of course, we have to keep the distance uh, 1.5, at least 1.5 millimeters to the areas and teeth, and at least three millimeters between the implants. When you make the osteotomy, I can give you a tip. You can make it for a half length of the drill to put the pins, check the position, check the position in many angulations because you'll be surprised that if you change the angulation, you will see different the position and sometimes that position is not the correct one. And after that, if you are sure that you uh, made your osteotomy perfectly, you can insert the implants, like you can see in this picture. You can keep one pin in place and insert the implant to be sure that you will have the parallel uh, implants at the end. Now it's time for the second implant to insert it, like you can see in the picture. And now it's time to check the biological width because it's very important, as I told you, to insert it, keeping in mind the bone remodelation around implants according to biological width around implants, which is different uh, than at the teeth. You can see that I have measured for, for both of the, the implants because the gingiva sometimes is not, uh, has not the same thickness, so I have to check. Then I have prepared my augmentation material. In uh, this case, I have used autologous and uh, xenograft. And after that, I have made uh, bone augmentation. You can see that I have filled the space between the buccal bone and the periosteum with my augmentation material. And after that, it's time for suturing the periosteum. And you can see how nice the periosteum covers the bone augmentation material. And this is the tension-free suture, which is very, very important. Sorry, I can show you again. Very, very important to be made correctly and very important to prepare the flap from the beginning to be stable and to, has, to have no tension. Otherwise, if you have uh, uh, dehiscence, you can lose the result. And you can see that if you have no tension, only after two days post-OP, it looks fantastic. It's a, a very good healing and you can see the bone volume. At the left, you can see the position of the implants. They are exactly where I want, it, I want them to be and exactly in the ideal position from the prosthetic point of view, because this is very important also to think from the beginning to insert the implants in the ideal prosthetic position. You can see that we have started with this bone defect and then we have gained more than three millimeters with bone augmentation and we have changed the buccal bone contour like you can see in this picture. So now we are sure that we'll have stable result. You can see that after four weeks, everything looks great and you can see the huge amount of bone created after using this technique. Do we have any advantages to use this technique? Yes, of course. The most important advantage is that we are working with the periosteum and the periosteum is 100% natural, is vascularized, is very strong and easy to suture and is naturally and perfectly fixed at the bottom. Just think about how expensive it would be such a membrane from the companies. But this membrane is 100% natural and is free of charge. So I think this is the best option in the world. And now let's see the second technique. The second technique is called snake technique. And uh, this concept is based on the idea that the lateral area is the 
also very important like the frontal area. And uh, I started uh, many years ago, I think uh, five or seven years ago, to think that there is no aesthetic area. All our oral cavity is aesthetic. Doesn't matter if uh, we are working in the frontal area or we are working on the lateral area. I'm sure that many of you had uh, cases like this with a concavity between the implants. And uh, we have uh, some options to treat uh, these uh, kind of situations. But we know that concavities are not good around our uh, teeth and our implants because concavities has, have two disadvantages. The first one is that every concavity leads to a gray shadow because the light doesn't, uh, the concavity doesn't reflect the light. And the other one is, uh, is that every concavity means retention and food retention mean, uh, means in time uh, periimplantitis. So one of the op options uh, would be pink porcelain. Some would uh, choose this. Maybe some would choose to try bone augmentation, even if I don't think this is a true option. I think soft tissue augmentation is the best option in this case. But what options do we have for soft tissue augmentations? We have the standard um, options like connective tissue graft, like free gingival graft, but what about a pediculated graft? And the difference is that the first one is dead, the second one is dead, but the pediculated graft is alive. And this is very important for our success. And I will show you how we can transform a case which is not simple, is quite difficult, in a success and to be very predictable. Another idea that I had when I uh, designed this concept and uh, I uh, designed uh, the SNE technique uh, was this uh, one wound concept. Because every time when I start the treatment, I uh, started like, like I would be the patient. And if I would be the patient, I would like to have uh, only one surgery, one wound uh, as uh, less invasive as possible to have everything fixed in one session. And of course, without um, too much trauma. And of course, if we can do it with only one wound, this uh, would be great. That's why I designed this technique and uh, I will uh, tell you the steps. The first step is that we have to set the flap edges and then we have to deapitalize the flap like you can see in the pictures. Then we have to prepare a split flap with a two millimeters uh, thickness, like you can see in the picture. And then we have to keep in mind, which is very important, to keep at least one millimeter of keratinized gingiva at the uh, margins. Because if we keep uh, one millimeter, at least, at least one millimeter uh, of uh, keratinized gingiva, the healing will be fantastic. And I'll show you a little bit later this. Then we prepare the partial thickness flap, like you can see here. And in this uh, particular case, I decided to use also the tunneling technique. After uh, I uh, tried in the graft, I prepared the papilla for a uh, tunneling technique described by uh, Anton Skulian. I will give you one uh, tip here. It's very important to prepare the papilla at the base, but not at the top, because if you detach the papilla until at the top, you can destroy the papilla. And uh, if you destroy it, for sure, you risk too much. So be attentive, don't go too up, only at the bottom of uh, half of the papilla or maximum two uh, from three parts, not uh, more than this. And then we can try to fix it. And we can use, I use only PTFE sutures. And after I tried this technique for many times, I, I uh, searched uh, the literature to see if uh, there is somebody else who published it. I didn't uh, find uh, anything. So I said to myself, I have to give uh, a name to this technique. And the name was uh, Snake because um, seeing the, uh, this picture in uh, my mind, uh, it looked like this. So that's why I uh, called it the uh, snake technique. Coming back to our clinical case, we can uh, roll the flap inside. We can fix it 
at the mesial part with a PTFE suture. And then we have to roll the margins on the flap and then to make the suture to compress the flap so that we um, uh, eliminate any dead space. And this is very important no matter what uh, surgery we, we are doing. If we want to do bone augmentation or soft tissue augmentations, it's very important not to have any dead space between the graft and the receptor site. And you can see that only after uh, 10 days, it looks fantastic. Look at the donor site. It's also healed in only 10 days. And if you want, you can try after three months and you can use it again if you don't have enough keratinized tissue. But we have, and you can see that when we started, we have this big concavity. At 10 days post-OP, the concavity is gone and now it's time for prosthetics. And we know that prosthetics could uh, help us a lot or could destroy everything. That's why it's very important to train your technician to work thinking biological because they are used to do it like uh, without uh, having any connection with the bi biology and this is not good. So please train your technician to understand the biological principles and to work properly. In this case, I have let uh, enough space for gingiva to grow. And you can see that we have very nice keratinized tissue around the crowns, but look at what uh, one year follow up, it looks even better. And the good technique is that one that works for a long period with a great success in time, not only after the surgery. And we can see that after two years, it looks even better. So we have created from this concavity papilla, we have here the keratinized thick attached gingiva, which is the golden standard in uh, soft tissue augmentation according to the last uh, publications of uh, Sue and Hutzeler from uh, 2019. The same patient, but uh, a little bit more complicated on the right uh, lower jaw. That case was on the left lower jaw and now the same patient on the right lower jaw. So now, because we have a complex treatment, we have to start with the treatment plan. And I recommend you to start every case with the treatment plan and to do it properly, to have time to do it and um, to be very attentive when uh, you are doing it. So we have to think about single or stage approach. And in this case, it's possible to have single approach. We have to decide from the beginning what kind of technique, what incision and what flap design. And we have used crystal incision and periosteal pocket flap. I told you a little bit uh, uh, earlier and uh, I will show you what uh, does uh, this mean. We use a resorbable uh, membrane and uh, autologous uh, bone, but also xenograft. And for the suture, every time I use only PTFE sutures. So be attentive that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And there is no uh, worse situation for your patient than to have a worse treatment plan and uh, actually to prepare from the beginning to fail. That's why I would recommend you to take your time for planning, to assume, assume what you propose to your patient to talk with your mentor about the treatment plan, if you have one, because sometimes you are focused on one idea and uh, if you are talking with somebody else, you can realize that your idea was uh, wrong, even if you were so sure that uh, is the best. Propose to the patients only treatments which are stable and aesthetic, because patients uh, doesn't care about technical details. They are coming uh, at our offices for uh, beautiful teeth, for a smile or for a function, but uh, they are not uh, coming to us to ask, uh, please um, uh, insert me some implants or make me bone augmentations or soft tissue augmentation. Be sure that they will have no pain, and this is very important. And I think this is the most important advertising for you to have a uh, patient uh, satisfied uh, that uh, they had no pain and uh, they had uh, beautiful uh, results at the end. 
And of course, make the plan like you would be the patient. And I can assure you that if you made the treatment plan like you would be the patient, a lot of things will be different and they will be different in uh, the best way. So now let's start the case. First step, crestal incision. Then we can notice that we have, uh, we are dealing with the knife crest. So for sure we need the bone augmentation in this case. And now it's time for uh, preparing the periosteal pocket flap. As I told you, described, uh, described by uh, Mario Steinman, Maurice Salama and Homley Wang in 2012. And that means that we start with the crystal incision. This time we section the periosteum. We prepare a full flap until the muco gingival margin, and then we split the flap. So actually we have a similar situation with the PMT, but um, minuses of this uh, technique is that we have the periosteum short. We cannot cover the neck of the implant and the bone augmentation around the implant with the periosteum. So that we need to cover it with a membrane, with a collagen membrane. But I'm sure that there is no collagen or any kind of artificial membrane comparable with the 100% natural membrane like periosteum. So after we have prepared the periosteal pocket flap, you can see how much we have gained the elasticity of the tissues. We can now augment the tissue as much as we want, the hard tissue, and for sure we will cover it without any tension. And this is one of the keys for the success to cover the bone grafting without any tension so that we can have a good, fast, proper maturation of the augmentation material. Otherwise, if we have the hisans, we can lose from 45% uh, to 100%. So everything is destroyed and the surgery is for nothing. And for sure that if we would be a patient, we would uh, like to have the best result, not the worst one. Then I have decided to use a bone block and I have harvested uh, this block with the piezo. I like to use piezo because um, uh, I have a minimally invasive uh, procedure with a minimally bone loss, which is very important. And uh, it's uh, fast, it's uh, safe, and we have a control irrigation and we have uh, the tips which are not uh, harmful for, uh, for the um, Gingiva, which is very important because we are working in an area where it's uh, sometimes it's very difficult to see. So uh, I think this uh, would be a good option, but you can uh, choose your technique as uh, you are used to. The same one wound concept. Actually, I just took the bone from this side and I placed it at this side. Then we have to try in the block to be sure that uh, it fits uh, perfectly. And you can see that I have designed the block a little bit asymmetric because the bone of the patient was asymmetric. Uh, the mesial part was the narrow and then it was a little bit wider. So I have prepared my bone block so that I can fix it perfectly. And uh, because I have prepared like this, you'll see that it was, um, easy to have a very good fixture. Then I have inserted the implants. I have prepared also the buccal blow, uh, bone with uh, some uh, spots inside for uh, bleeding. And then I have uh, fixed uh, the block. It is written screws, but actually I have used only one screw. Most of the times I have uh, used and I use two or uh, even more because it's very important that the block has to be very, very stable. But in this particular case, you can see that I have prepared the second um, hole for the pin or for the screw actually, but uh, I didn't use it because it was so stable so that I decided not to use another one because when I take the screws out, I want to be as less invasive as possible. So if I have many screws, of course, I, I need a little bit uh, bigger flap. And uh, many, uh, many times I just make a small incision into the gingiva and uh, unscrew it uh, and that's all without any flap. 
But in this particular case, I have used the flap too. I have uh, harvested uh, also uh, with the bone scraper, the autologous bone. And then I have filled everything, the space between the bone block and the receptor site with the um, autologous bone, and then cover everything with the xenograft because we know that xenograft is more stable in time. So I wanted to have a more stable uh, result in time. And I have covered everything with the uh, collagen slow resorbable membrane. I have uh, placed uh, even two, one uh, from the buckle to the lingual and another one only at the crestal area to have more um, potential to protect the graft uh, in the most important area around the necks uh, of the implants. And then of course, the tension-free suture which is uh, very, very important, as I told you. And we can see that the healing is very good, but the problem when we have this kind of big augmentation and when we move the tissue, we actually move also the gingival margin. And we know that around our crowns, around our implants, we need keratinized thick attached tissue. But in this case, we don't have this tissue. So it's time for the snake technique to improve the tissue. You can see at the uncovering that the bone block um, was uh, perfectly integrated. After that, I have unscrewed the screw. And you can see that I have gained the volume from uh, four millimeters to almost 10 millimeters. Now we have enough bone around the implants, but we need also soft tissue, good quality soft tissue around the implants to conserve our result. Otherwise, if we just, uh, we are just happy with the bone, but we have uh, uh, poor soft tissue around, probably in time we are uh, facing problems. And then we start with uh, the epitalization. We have Two options for the epitalization. We can use the blade, like uh, you can see in the picture, and I like this option, but you can do it also with a uh, rounded burr or also uh, with the Arkansas. And then, ideally, is that when you place the healing caps, it's uh, ideal that you don't raise the periosteum from the bone because every uh, time when you raise the periosteum from the bone means that uh, you are aggressive to the bone and you can lose some bone. But in this particular case, I couldn't do this. And now it's time for snake. This time it's a little bit different approach because now I need to improve the quality of the tissue on the buccal side and to push the keratinized tissue on the buccal. And you can see how nice it will heal. Suturing. This is the continuous mantis suture. And you can see that after only 10 days, it looks very, very good. And looks uh, look also at the donor side, healing very, very fast. And look at the new mucogingival margin after the snake. So now we have good tissue around our implants. So we uh, can start the prosthetics. And you can see that we have good tissue around our crowns, but you can see that after one year looks even better and we have a great papilla between the two molars. And after two years, it looks even better. So we have gained the keratinized thick attached soft tissue, which as I told you before is the golden standard in soft tissue augmentation. Do we have any advantages for the snake technique because otherwise, why should we use it? Yes, I think we have a lot of advantages. The first one is the graph stability because we have the graph from the beginning fixed at one of the ends. So we have to fix only the mesial part and we can fix it better. We have the advantage of only one wound, which is very important. And as I told you, if I would be the patient, of course, I would like to have only one wound. And I know that is not so uh, pleasant and the patients are afraid about the free gingival grafts or uh, any kind of graft from the palate. 
because it's not so comfortable after the surgery. We have a better vascularization, which is very, very important because the vascularity is actually the key for success for soft tissue augmentation. Otherwise, the graft will have necrosis and we will lose the result. We have a faster healing of the donor side. As you could see in the pictures, it uh, heals very fast, faster than uh, the palate, and absolutely no pain or discomfort, which is so important because we know that sometimes the patients are complaining about uh, pain and discomfort after we harvest uh, free gingival graft or uh, connective tissue graft from the palate. Steve Jobs said that uh, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. And uh, I know that you are here and uh, you join my lecture because you know that uh, being good is not good enough in our job. And I appreciate that you are here with me. That's why I recommend you to dream high and to follow your dreams. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's hope that we'll have a better world after this uh, very strange period. And uh, let's stay home a little bit more and then come back to our uh, offices and make our patients happy. Thank you very much. If you have questions, please. So, sir, it was really an informative and a wonderful session, and it seems everybody present here is appreciating you. Thank you very much. I'm happy to hear that. And we, I think we didn't get any question yet. So, yeah. That means everything was clear. Yes, sir. <laughs> or they didn't understand anything. <laughs> no, everything is clear. I think so. Because it was a beautiful presentation, self-explanatory. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you for taking out the time to speak to us today on this very interesting topic. And it was really a great session, very informative. And hosting your session no was. We got some questions? Yeah, we have got one. Okay, we have got one. Okay, uh, okay just a second. I will share it with. Uh, the first question is asked by Dr. Suresh Dhillo. Okay. He asked, does this snake technique can be applicable in lower anterior region because anterior region is mostly deficient? No, unfortunately we can use it. This is actually the only one disadvantage that we can use it only at the distal area when we have no teeth to the distal so that we can roll the flap from the distal to the mesial. All right. Okay, any other question, Dr. Gagan? If uh, it's lower jaw or upper jaw, but unfortunately only on the lateral area. Right. Elaborate on snake technique. Elaborate snake technique? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, someone asked elaboration on snake technique. You have to elaborate snake technique. Elaborate? Yeah. Uh, Uh, I have elaborated. <laughs> what should I? Uh, if uh, he has a specific uh, specific question, uh, I can answer. But to elaborate, uh, that means to to tell again the presentation. If uh, right. doctor is from India, I will be in December in India, and I will elaborate a lot uh, the technique. Okay, great, sir. So. Next question is by Dr. Varis. He asked, can you give more tips regarding split thickness and your instruments? Yes, uh, regarding the split um, uh, mucosal detachment, you have to use at the first, uh, as I told you, at the mucogingival margin, a blunt instrument, and you have to press it to the bone, not to the soft tissue, because otherwise you can perforate the soft tissue and then we have to use a special um, suture for a perforated uh, soft tissue. And it's better not to start it, uh, this technique without knowing how to suture it to perforate the uh, soft tissue. 
And the other instruments are, uh, uh, the name is uh, TK Stike, and you can uh, find them uh, on the market. All are spe right. Are specially designed for uh, mucosal detachment. All right. And next question is by Dr. Gashi. Uh, they asked, at the donor side, do you do any release of soft tissue or do you suture directly? Uh, suture direct, directly. Okay. It has a lot of elasticity, the tissue to the back. This is the advantage and that's why it heals very fast because it's, uh, it's very elastic and you can uh, just suture it without uh, cutting, releasing, making any releasing uh, decisions. That's why it heals very, very fast. Okay. The next question is back by Dr. Tuan. He asked, how could you determine the length of the snake graft that you need? Sorry? How could you determine the length of the snake graft that you need? Uh, of course, we have to measure at the beginning how much do we need, and then we have to prepare with 30% more because when we roll the flap, we lose some of the length. So we have to prepare with 30% more than we need. Okay. And next question is by Dr. Gashi. They asked, why do you prefer blade instead of burrs for deepitalization? Isn't it easier with the burr? Yes, it's easier with the burr, but with the burr, you have no control. You, do, you don't know how deep you are going. This is uh, why I don't like with the burr, because you put the burr and sometimes you go deeper, sometimes you don't go deeper, but with the blade, you can make it very, very nice and you see what you take out. This is the biggest advantage because with the burr, you, you don't see what you took out. You don't know, maybe you took too much, maybe you took uh, not enough. But with the blade, you can see exactly how much you took. So you, you can decide if you need more or it's enough. The viewers are asking in India, which region you are coming? I mean, in which state? Sorry, when I'm coming to India? Yeah, sir, in which state you are coming? Viewers are asking where you are coming. I will be there in December in... Um, uh, I'm not sure I will come back with the details because now we are preparing the details. Maybe we will be in two towns, but uh, actually we are in discussion. So uh, it's better not to give now the informations, but uh, uh, the doctor can check my uh, Facebook address. Yes, the Dima Cosmin, uh, the name, and uh, I will uh, post there the details. So, will you prefer international flights due to Corona? Sorry. Sir, will you prefer international flights for Corona due to uh, due to this Corona? No, no, COVID no. COVID no. nineteen. <laughs> due to this coronavirus, no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So we end with the questions. Uh, yeah. So, sir, it was really a great session, very wonderful, informative, and Thank hosting your session was wonderful. Thank you very much. So, at last, do you like to say some words? Uh, thank you again for your invitation. It was very nice to be here. It uh, is very, very nice to be in this um, list and uh, it's a great pleasure for me and a great honor to be on the same uh, list with uh, some of the best speakers in the world. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. So we'll, we'll be back with our next session in a few minutes. For more information regarding certificate registration speaker schedule, visit the links in the description box. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, bye-bye, sir.